Hello, my name is Sean, also known as Kayo, and this is Arch Linux post install to Xorg. Following the Arch Linux philosophy, these tutorials are geared at being simple and efficient. If you have yet to install Arch Linux, please reference my installation video. A link for this will be provided in the description. Okay, let's begin. If you haven't already done so, boot up your machine into Arch Linux. Once greeted with the login prompt, log in with the root account and the password you assigned during the installation. Now that we are logged into the super user account, the first thing you should do is make yourself a user account. Most typical tasks you will use on a daily basis will not need root privileges. It is good practice to log in to an unprivileged account and then to elevate to root only when needed by using a utility such as sudo. To create an account, issue the command user add space dash m space dash g space users space dash s space forward slash bin forward slash bash space and then your username. I will be using the username Kayo for the extent of this tutorial. Then set a password for the account with pass wd space the username. Next, we will be utilizing the Arch Linux package manager called Pacman. Package managers are used to install, upgrade, and remove software. If you installed the 64 bit version of Arch Linux, you will need to make sure Pacman will be utilizing the 64 bit library. Edit the file forward slash etc forward slash pacman.conf. I will be using Nano for this. Feel free to use whatever text editor you are comfortable with. Scroll down and uncomment the lines involving multilib, but leave commented multilib testing. Then go ahead and save and exit to return to the console. Now that we have our package manager set up, let's use pacman to update the system. Issue the command pacman space dash capital S Y U. This will synchronize the local package database with the remote package database and then update any packages that have version differences. Note that if you updated the package named Linux, this will include a new kernel and base version of Linux, and it is good practice to reboot after such an update. After updating the system, we can install sudo, the utility I mentioned earlier, and then finally log out of the root account and into your user account. Start by installing sudo with pacman. Issue the command pacman space dash capital S space sudo. When this is finished, we need to edit the sudo config file. This must be done with the utility vi sudo. Take note that running only vi sudo will open the config in vi. I am instead going to issue the command in all caps editor equals nano space vi sudo in order to trick vi sudo into opening in nano. Scroll down until you see the section entitled user privilege specification. Duplicate the line for the root account, except instead of root, change the first word to the name of the user you created earlier. Then go ahead and save and exit. At this point, you can log out and re-log in as your user. Keep in mind that from now on, you will have to proceed all root commands with the command sudo in order to give yourself privilege escalation. Every time that you do this, you will be prompted for a password. Now that we have our user account, a baseline for security, and the system up to date, we can continue. You will eventually need a development environment in order to build our own packages when needed. If you installed the 32 bit version of Arch Linux, simply run the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space base dash devel to install one. However, if you installed the 64 bit version, like I did, You'll need to run the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space multilib dash devel space fake root space git space j sean 
space w get space make space pkg dash config space auto conf space auto make space patch pressing enter to confirm installing all packages in this package group and then choosing yes to replace the 32-bit gcc libs with the 64-bit version this will install all of the basic utilities you will need to build packages on a 32 or 64 bit machine. The Arch User Repository, or simply the AUR, is a community driven package repository for Arch Linux. Probability is, if you can't find a package in the official repositories, it will likely be in the AUR. The package manager I personally recommend for dealing with the AUR is Packer. The reason I recommend this is because its syntax is identical to Pacman. To download Packer into your home directory, issue the command w get space http colon forward slash forward slash aur dot arch linux dot org forward slash packages forward slash pa forward slash packer forward slash packer dot tar dot gz. Then unzip the archive into your home directory with tar space z x v f space packer dot tar dot gz then change into the directory and build the package with cd space packer space and and space make pkg and then finally issue the command sudo space Pacman space dash capital U space Packer and then press tab and enter to install Packer on the system. We are now going to begin the process of installing Xorg, also known as X Windows. ALSA, or Advanced Linux Sound Architecture, is the Linux kernel component that provides device drivers for sound cards. ALSA usually works by default. You merely need to unmute it. We can do this by first installing the ALSA-utils package with sudo space pacman space dash capital S space ALSA-utils, then issuing the command ALSA mixer to bring up the mixer. You will need to unmute the channels for the speakers you have. Make sure while you are in here that there are no channels enabled that you do not have. For example, if you do not have a center channel, make sure the center channel is muted. Then exit back to the shell with escape. To test your speaker setup, run the command speaker dash test space dash c space 2, where 2 is the number of speakers you have. Remember, subwoofers count. Utilizing the shortcut control c to terminate the speaker test. If your sound is still not working at this point, refer to the link in the description for more information on troubleshooting ALSA. Now we can install the base packages for Xorg. Do so with the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space Xorg dash server space Xorg dash x init space Xorg dash server dash utils space mesa note that the mesa package is included for 3d support if you do not have a 3d capable graphics card you can skip this package with that finished you'll need to install video drivers for use with xorg i generally lump this into three categories virtual box setup open source drivers and proprietary drivers if you installed arch linux inside a virtual box you will need to install the guest editions package with the command sudo space Pacman space dash capital S space virtualbox dash guest dash utils. Next, you'll need to load all the required kernel modules at boot by creating the file virtualbox.conf in the folder forward slash etc forward slash modules dash load dot d. Remember to use sudo preceding your editor command as etc is owned by root. 
With your editor of choice open, add VBox Guest, VBox SF, and VBox Video, each unaligned by themselves. Then go ahead and save and exit. Finally, enable the VirtualBox service at boot with the command sudo space systemctl space enable space vbox service dot service. Moving on to open source video cards. If you do not know what kind of video card you have, issue the command ls pci space pipe space grep space in all caps vga. You can also pull up a list of all available open source drivers with the command pacman space dash capital S S space XF 86 dash video space pipe space less. Make sure, no matter which video driver you install, that you also install the XF 86 dash video dash VESA driver. The reason for this is if the specified driver fails to load, XORG will always fall back on the VESA driver. Just keep in mind that this driver does not provide 2D or 3D acceleration. To install this, issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space xf86 dash video dash VESA. Using a similar command to install the open source video driver that corresponds to your video card. Finally, for those of you running ATI and NVIDIA graphics cards, I would highly recommend installing the proprietary drivers as opposed to the open source ones, as they have advanced support for 3D acceleration. To install the NVIDIA drivers, issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space NVIDIA space lib32 dash NVIDIA dash utils. Or, to install the ATI drivers, issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space linux dash headers space catalyst dash dkms space catalyst dash utils space lib32 dash catalyst dash utils. Keep in mind with both of these that if you are only running the 32-bit version of Arch Linux, you can leave off the packages beginning with lib32. For ATI cards, it is also required to enable DKMS or Dynamic Kernel Module support so that your system can rebuild the ATI kernel modules properly upon upgrade. To do so, issue the command sudo space systemctl space enable space dkms dot service. With DKMS now enabled, you will need to modify your bootloader to stop it from loading regular KMS so that the two are not in conflict. For syslinux, edit the file forward slash boot forward slash syslinux forward slash syslinux.cfg and add to the append line the option no mode set. Then save and exit. If you use grub2 instead of syslinux, instead edit the file forward slash etc forward slash default forward slash grub and add the option no mode set to the grub underscore cmd line underscore linux line. Then save and exit. Keep in mind that no matter which you use, syslinux or grub2, to edit either file, you will have to use sudo as the files are owned by root. Lastly, for grub2, issue the command grub dash mkconfig space dash o space forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash grub dot cfg to regenerate your grub2 config with the new option. At this point, if you configured an ATI card, NVIDIA card, or VirtualBox guest, you will need to reboot your machine to load the proper kernel modules and module blacklists. Now that the video card is installed, let's move on to configuring XORG. If you are using VirtualBox or an open source driver, you should not need to configure XORG at all. 
as it should work under default settings. If you're using the ATI proprietary driver, you should issue the command sudo space ATI config space dash dash initial. And for the NVIDIA proprietary driver, you should issue the command sudo space NVIDIA dash x config. With Xorg configured, let's install a default environment so that we can test to see if Xorg is working properly. Issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space Xorg dash twm space Xorg dash x clock space x term. Once finished, you can start Xorg with the command start x. A few windows should open up, and your mouse and your keyboard should also both be working. Once satisfied that all is well, you can use the command exit on each of the terminals to return to the console. From here, you have multiple options. You can either go the route of simply installing a window manager, or you can install an all-inclusive desktop environment. Window managers come in three flavors, stacking, such as Compiz and Openbox, tiling, such as Ion3 and Rat Poison, and dynamic, such as Awesome and Xmonad. These tend to be lightweight by design. Desktop environments, on the other hand, such as E17, GNOME, KDE, LXDE, and XFCE, provide a full graphical user interface, including a desktop, stock applications, and more. Being a fan of elegance and simplicity, I tend to favor window managers over desktop environments. I realize, however, that this is not the case of most beginning Linux users. I will therefore walk you through installing the two major ones, GNOME and KDE. For GNOME, you must first start by installing the two base packages. Issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space gnome space gnome dash extra. This will install the base GNOME package and the extras which include various tools, such as a media player, a calculator, an editor, and other applications. Then, in order to get GNOME to start when you boot your computer, you will need to issue the command sudo space systemctl space enable space gdm dot service. If you wish to use KDE, you will instead issue the command sudo space pacman space dash capital S space KDE. This will install the current KDE software compilation release in its entirety. Then, in order to get KDE to start when you boot up your computer, issue the command sudo space systemctl space enable space kdm dot service. You can now safely reboot into GNOME or KDE with the command sudo space systemctl space reboot. Congratulations, you should now have a pretty good baseline for Arch Linux. To proceed, log in to the user account you created at the beginning of this tutorial. That now wraps up Arch Linux from post install to Xorg. Thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Sean, also known as Kayo, and I hope to see you soon.